Hello and welcome to Tutoring Potential. Okay, today we are going to be covering the first part of the geometry and of course practice exam for 2014. <clears throat> Should be coming up this this upcoming week. Okay. The first question asks, what is the converse of the following statement? And the original statement is, if today is Tuesday, then yesterday was Monday. If P, then Q. P is today is Tuesday. Q is yesterday was Monday. According to our conditional statements, our converse will be if Q, then P. So we reverse our, our argument and our conclusion. Uh, if yesterday was Monday, then today is Tuesday. The inverse of the following statement, if it rained yesterday, then the field is muddy. The inverse will be, if not P, then not Q. So it, we negate both P and Q. If it did not rain yesterday, then the field will not be muddy, or is not muddy. Choice B. <clears throat> The contrapositive of the following statement, if an object is a triangle, then it is a polygon. Our contrapositive reads, if not Q, then not P. Uh, also, if the, if the original conditional is true, <clears throat> excuse me, the contrapositive will be true. The converse and the inverse are not necessarily true. So if our statement is, if an object is a triangle, then it is a polygon. The contrapositive is, if the object is not a polygon, then, I'm sorry, if the object is not a polygon, then it is not a triangle. What did I put? If not Q, then not P. If it is not a polygon, then it is not a triangle. All right, so uh, I've already found an error my first go around. If not Q, <clears throat> then not P. So I will make a note on the overview. Parallelogram ABCD is drawn below. What is the length of diagonal AC? Well, here's A, C. The points are 2, 3, and negative 3, negative 4. So here's our distance formula. Call this point, doesn't matter, but I'll call this uh, point 2 and this point 1. So it's Y2, negative 4, minus 3, all squared, plus negative 3, minus 2, all squared, is uh, negative 7, all squared, which is 49 plus negative 5 all squared, which is 25, or the square root of 74. <clears throat> Circle C is shown below with diameter AB. What are the coordinates of point A? Well, the x-coordinate of point A has to be less than negative 3, so I can mark out this one. The y-coordinate has to be less than negative 2. Okay, so what I've done here is basically one of two things. One is I can see that I'm going down 2 and left 2 to get to point C. So then I go down 2 and left 2 from point C. So down 2 would be well, straight down 2 would be negative 3, negative 4, and I go to the left is negative 5, negative 4. The other way to do this is the midpoint formula to say that our point C is the midpoint between B, which is given, and A, which is what we want. So the x-coordinate of C, negative 3, will be the average of negative 1, and we pick a variable x. And then I'll solve that, and I would get uh, negative 5. And then I would say that negative 2, the y point of C, is the average between 0 and our, our, our variable. Negative 2 is 
0 plus y over 2, uh, y is negative 4, a point is negative 5, negative 4. Joe is building a frame for a roof on top of a shed. He constructed the frame so that CJD, CJD, this triangle is isosceles. CJ equals JD, that's the isosceles triangle. CD is parallel, I drew that here, parallel to BE. CJB, this angle is 30 degrees, and CDF is 115. And it wants the measurement formed by CF and DF. So I've reconstructed this triangle. And what's going to happen is if this angle CJB is 30, then by alternate interior angles, this angle is 30. Now I have a triangle CDF with 30, 115, and uh, are unknown. So I'll add 115 and 130 to get 145 plus X equals 180, 180 minus 145. 35 degrees. In the figure below, AD, A, I'm sorry, AB is, is parallel to CD. Angle 1 is 7x minus 25. Angle 2 is 3x plus 15. Angle 3 is 5x plus 5 and it wants the value of x. Uh, well what I've done is I've, sh I've drawn corresponding angles between angle 3 and the supplement of angle 2. So now 5x plus 5 plus 3x plus 15 equals 180. 8x plus 20 equals 180. 8x equals 60. x equals 20. I, I don't use this at all. I don't use this at all because these are my parallel lines. So I can't, I can't, the, basically angle one and this angle are not corresponding because AC is not parallel to BD. So there's a little bit of extra information in there. I don't, I don't need this at all. <clears throat> Regular pentagon, A, B, C, D, E what diagonal AC is shown below. What is the measure of ACD, this angle? There's a few ways I can do this. One is to find the interior angle of a pentagon. I do that by N minus 2 times 180 over N will give me the interior angle of a polygon with N sides. So I put 5 in, that's 180 times uh, 3 divided by 5 is 108. Okay, so this angle is 108. Then I've drawn AC. AB is equal to BC because it's a regular pentagon, which means that angle BAC is equal to BCA. So 108, I don't know that I drew that out. 108 plus 2x equals 180. 2x equals 72. x is 36. So each of these is 36, and 36 plus the angle we want, 36 plus, I called it Y, which is angle ACD equals 108. And so the angle we want is 108 minus 36 or 72. Also, <clears throat> angle DCB is 108. Each of these angles, A, B, C, D, E, are 108. So I'm really going these are equal measurements, right? From EC, AC, what I mean is this, this, this sort of projection this way is equal to that projection that way from C. So I'm going one, two, two out of three, two thirds of 108 is 72. And you can think about it that way. So our answer is C, 72. So I can do it as a fraction of 108. Uh, I could also make this a, well, this is a trapezoid. It's an isosceles trapezoid, and these two are 108. So I would add those two up, like 108 plus 108 plus 2x equals uh, 360. And I could solve it that way. Okay. 
Measure of exterior angle of regular polygon is 36 degrees. Which of the following correctly names the polygon? Well, if the exterior angle is 36, then to find the interior, I subtract that from 180. The interior is 144. Now, I'll I need to know there's 10 sides in a decagon, 6 in a hexagon, 8 in an octagon, and 5 in a pentagon. And what I'll do is I'll plug those numbers in for n. And the formula n minus 2 times 180 over n equals 144. And when I get to 10, uh, 8 times 180 over 10 will be 144. Uh, let's see what I did this way. Or I could solve algebraically n minus 2 times 180 over n equals 144. Multiply both sides by n. 180n minus 360 equals, that's distributing the 180 equals 144. And so from here to here, I've distributed the 180 and I've multiplied the n, I've moved the n over here. That'll give me, uh, subtracting 144, that'll give me 36n equals, add 36, 360n equals 10. Or I could plug these in. Okay. This one's a little tricky. A landscaper is installing sprinkler pipe around the perimeter of two gardens. Uh, the smaller garden has 26 sprinklers attached to its total length of pipe with equal lengths of pipe separating each sprinkler. B is similar to A, which means the ratio of the sides is the same. Both gardens use the same length of pipe to separate each sprinkler. How many sprinklers will be attached to the pipe surrounding garden B? Okay. Well, what I do is I, I add up the perimeter of A. There's 26 sprinklers. And I'm going to get one sprinkler every three yards. Let me just add those up right here to make sure. That's 78 divided by 26. So that's seven, the perimeter is 78. So it's 78 divided by 26. So it's every three yards. Now, garden B, this length is 63 yards. So I do 63 divided by 18, I get 3.5. The scale factor is 3.5. So if this uses 26 sprinklers, I can multiply that by my scale factor, which is 3.5, and, and I'll get 91. Otherwise, you're, you have to multiply each of these by 3 and you're adding the perimeter. It'll stay the same because uh, it, it'll, it'll, the, the perimeter will be in ratio, so it'll stay the same. So I don't have to do that for each and add them up. I can just multiply by my scale factor, which is 3 and a half. The frame for the front portion of the tent is is created using four congruent right triangles. What is A, B, C? Okay. Four congruent right triangles. These four. It's not very particular about that. Well, what I've done is I've drawn this, not to scale, but these are measured 36. What I, I, I draw this baseline. This sort of with the ground. You don't really need all this. I draw this baseline, that's going to be a 90 degree angle, so 90 minus 36 is 54. So this is 54, it'll be 54 on this side, 54 plus 54 is 108, subtracted from 180 is 72. Um, I guess I could also, because I have 90 and 36, I could find this angle and this angle, and these two are 90, so then I could add, like what is 90? So the oh so of course so the, so these are 54 and these are 54 so right I want this one so I could this is 180 plus 108 which is 288 360 minus 288 is 72 I could do the degrees around this point B I could solve it that way would also work. I'm going to cut it off here. I'll start with number 12 next time. As always, thanks for watching and please comment and ask questions in the section below. Thanks again.